What's up everybody, welcome back to Life So Crazy, it's the Vangola Boss here. It's been nearly two weeks since the new Elden Ring DLC dropped and already the cup of tears from the foul tarnished overfloweth. I'm used to seeing grown men rage and break controllers after hours of struggling on a boss. But when I saw Let Me Solo Her, the man, the myth, the legend who made Melania look like child's play, say the final boss was folding him, I knew this DLC was built different. But still, you press on instead of being sorry and giving the game negative reviews because it's too hard. Now, many who lack the flame of ambition have cried for Miyazaki to show mercy to no avail, but it's always entertaining to see the complaints and today's example is one of the goofier ones I've ever heard. And it all started with... Hold on, pause. There's this clip from a recent video from Alana Pierce that has been making the rounds online where she talks about various disabilities and accessibility options to help those who suffer from them and why Elden Ring and Souls games as a whole should incorporate them. But she got onto the topic of situational disabilities, which until today I never knew were a thing. And after a puddle's depth worth of research, I can confidently say it amounts to a mix of inclusivity and victimhood culture painting any and all attempts to complete a task with any slight hindrance as a disability. Apparently, disabilities are a spectrum, and some examples shown in this graphic compare an individual with one arm to a parent holding a child and only having one arm free, Bruh. or a blind person to the situationally disabled distracted driver. Remember guys, another situational disability is trying to fill out a form on a mobile device while holding a cup of coffee in your hand as if you couldn't just put that coffee down. Do you get it now? So you can imagine why the example she gave ended up stirring the WAP's nest. I mean, it's concerned. There are long-term disabilities. There are situational disabilities. There are temporary disabilities. It counts as a disability where a video game like Elden Ring is concerned if you have a kid. You have a two-year-old, you're trying to play Elden Ring, you can't pause. It is a situational disability that you have, where the game not having the option for you to be able to pause, for example, is a hindrance for your particular disability. This is unbelievable. Oh my gosh. I, I mean... In her defense, she says the term has existed in software development for a long time now, and it's not a term normal people use, which is evident from the response she received. It's true that in various industries, those on the inside all use jargon that people outside the club aren't privy to. I got a friend who's a nurse, so I asked her what a situational disability was, and her take related to helping patients post-operation. We were talking past each other for a bit, but when I sent her the spectrum graphic which falls in line with Alana's definition, she said y'all are using that term disabled very loosely. Yes, health and gaming are two different industries but I find trying to compare a distracted driver with a blind individual very poor. When it comes to gaming, y'all might as well just throw the whole term away. Cause children playing around your house distracting you from the game is not a disability. Your child, which is your responsibility, just so happens to be an inconvenience to your gaming session. It's funny how dang near every industry is receiving sensitivity training and an overhaul to do away with outdated language, like airlines getting rid of mail dominated language like airman or unmanned in favor of gender neutral terms like aviator and uncrewed but language that tries to reinforce inclusivity through impairment gets a pass hmm. really makes you think and overall trying to blur the line of demarcation between the disabled and non-disabled like this is a slap in the face to people that actually have to live with impairments imagine me a whole able-bodied individual telling the cashier i met last week at a restaurant who only had one arm that i know all too well what it's like to have only one arm free to do something when i'm carrying a suitcase outrageously unserious now, this is roughly 30 seconds from an 18 minute video of waffling and it comes from the second half where she speaks specifically on accessibility in Elden Ring and how a pause feature could help. It was really smooth sailing up until then, she spoke about how people should be able to criticize from soft games the recent patch, and the tools the DLC offers to help players not get mollywhopped by basic enemies. And then she got to talking about various disabilities and how playing Elden Ring with children can be considered one, at least in a game developer's mind. By her logic, natural bodily functions such as hunger pangs or your body telling you to go relieve yourself while you're gaming are situational disabilities. My situational disability was growing up and having to deal with a father who didn't understand or care that you can't pause an online game of Call of Duty. You know how stressful it was being on a 12 to 15 kill streak in Modern Warfare 3 
going for MOABs, worried that at any moment my dad would tell me to come fetch him the remote. I wonder if there are any game devs who thought of making features to cater to my situation. I'ma keep it a buck with you, Habibi. I ain't trying to hear none of that situational mumbo jumbo with all the unconventional ways people have beat Elden Ring, from only using one hand, to using dance pads, to even beating the game with their freaking mind. I want you to look Elon Musk's first Neuralink patient who has managed to play games of chess with his mind despite being paralyzed from the neck down in the eye and tell him more about how playing Elden Ring with toddlers present is a form of a disability. And after watching the whole video, I'm unconvinced, especially after hearing this recent quote from Miyazaki. If we really wanted the whole world to play the game, we could just crank the difficulty down more and more, but that wasn't the right approach, Miyazaki said of Elden Ring. Had we taken that approach, I don't think the game would have done what it did because the sense of achievement that players gain from overcoming these hurdles is such a fundamental part of the experience. Turning down difficulty would strip the game of that joy, which, in my eyes, would break the game itself. I had to listen to it twice to make sure I wasn't tripping, but she quite literally says these games are designed to be extremely difficult and that there's a baseline level of challenge for all players. One that can be made harder, but not easier, lest the appeal be lost. She said this level of challenge should be maintained regardless of accessibility features available. And when I really thought about it, I couldn't wrap my mind around how this could actually be achieved. And since she references herself as someone with experience on accessibility in games, I was waiting to hear her ideas on what could be done. And outside of less button presses, the solution she offered was aimed towards the hotly contested and culture of get good discourse surrounding how FromSoft games are beaten in the form of end game screens showcasing stats and the methods a player used to beat the game that they could use as bragging rights. She then uses Tunic as an example of a game she beat at the highest difficulty which features wait for it, a god mode, which happens to make it so you can't take any damage, removing a lot of the challenge, aka the point of FromSoft games. From what I've heard, Elden Ring is already the most accessible Souls game out there, which no doubt factors into why it's been so successful and popular. I don't really see the issue with having a pause button, but we're in a day and age where everyone says respect the game director's vision, so why doesn't that apply here? To wrap this up, Elden Ring is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. It is for those emboldened by the flame of ambition, but it ain't for the situationally disabled. And that needs to be on a warning label. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And drop a comment down below. I want to hear what y'all got to say about this. Check out the two videos showing up on the screen to see more life so crazy. It's been the Vongola Boss and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.